Hey, welcome to Idle Tales. Today we're going to Comic Con in Madison. Let's go check it out. Going on to $16. After the long box diving and cosplay competition, there'll be some interviews and sales pitches from writers and artists towards the end of the video, so keep watching. A comic book convention, or Comic Con, is a fan convention with a primary focus on comic books and comic book culture, in which comic book fans gather to meet creators, experts, and each other. Commonly, comic conventions are multi-day events hosted at convention centers, hotels, or college campuses. They feature a wide variety of activities and panels, with a larger number of attendees participating in cosplay than most other types of fan conventions. Comic book conventions are also used as a vehicle for industry, in which publishers, distributors, and retailers represent their comic-related releases. Comic book conventions may be considered derivatives of science fiction conventions, which began in the late 1930s. At commercial events, comic book creators often give out autographs to the fans, sometimes in exchange for a flat appearance fee, and sometimes may draw illustrations for a per item fee. Commercial conventions are usually quite expensive and are hosted in hotels. This represents a change in comic book conventions which traditionally were more oriented towards comic books as a mode of literature. The first official comic book convention was held in 1964 in New York City and was called New York Comic Con. Nowadays comic conventions are big business with reoccurring shows in every major American city. The biggest shows include a large range of pop culture and entertainment elements across virtually all genres, including horror, animation, anime, manga, toys, collectibles, card games, video games, web comics, and fantasy novels. Internationally, the world's largest comic book convention in terms of attendees is Japan's Comiket, which boasts an annual attendance of over a half a million people. Comic book conventions increased dramatically in the 1970s, with many of the large conventions of the modern era being established during the decade. In the early 1970s, conventions sprang up in almost every major American city as well as London with Comic Mart, a bi-monthly trade show which ran regularly until the mid-1980s. Comic book creators, editors, and publishers began to make it part of their routine to attend conventions as official guests. By the end of the 1980s, comic book conventions were evolving into sprawling affairs that promoted films, television shows, celebrity performers, video games, toys, and cosplay, as much as comic books. Many historians date this shift to the release of Tim Burton's Batman film in 1989, which sparked the convention circuit's newfound embrace of Hollywood. In response to the big conventions shifting focus away from comic books themselves, a number of small conventions sprang up at the mid-1990s that turned the focus back onto comics, particularly those not published by the big mainstream companies, DC Comics and Marvel Comics. Attendees include artists and dealers offering products and services for sale to fans and those to wish to buy them. Others come for the programming, or to meet friends or other comic book fans in general. Many attend for all of these reasons. Some later publish a con report detailing their experiences. Comic book conventions typically feature official guests or guests of honor. These guests are to some extent the headliners of the convention. 
conventions provide a forum for fans to see firsthand and meet their favorite authors and artists. They also serve the interests of authors, editors, and other publishing professionals, providing opportunities for networking, promoting, and a convenient location for contract negotiations and other business meetings. Artist Alley is a fixture at most comic conventions. It is an area where creators display and sell their work, take commissions, sign autographs, and interact with fans. These areas may also include crafts, drawn art, self-published books or video, and more. Traditionally, conventions held a costume contest called a masquerade, where persons go on stage and compete for nominal prizes based on their skill in assembling and presenting genre-inspired outfits. This, however, would be more accurately labeled a talent show rather than the fancy dress ball that the term suggests. From press coverage of comic book and anime conventions has arisen the widespread tendency of fans in general attendance at the con to dress up as their favorite characters in elaborate costumes that are time consuming and or expensive to assemble. Panel led discussions or panels usually fill up the daytime hours of most conventions with typically one hour discussions involving some predetermined topic usually related to in at least some way to comics. Some conventions feature award ceremonies in which the best works and most notable individuals are recognized for their contributions to the field. An exhibit hall or dealer's room is a popular feature at comic book conventions. Publishing companies, distributors, and other proprietors often arrive to exhibit and or sell their newest products to fans. Wares can include back issues of comic books, graphic novels and trade paperbacks, manga and anime media, action figures, apparel or pre-made costumes, music CDs, software, decorations, toys, art books, specialty foods, and many more. Cosplay is an activity and performance art in which participants called cosplayers wear costumes and fashion accessories to represent a specific character. Cosplayers often interact to create a subculture and a broader use of the term cosplay applies to any costumed role playing in venues apart from the stage. Favorite sources include anime, cartoons, comic books, manga, television series, and video games. The term is composed of the two aforementioned counterparts, costume and role playing. Cosplay costumes vary greatly and can range from simple themed clothing to highly detailed costumes. It is generally considered different from Halloween and Mardi Gras costume wear as the intention is to replicate a specific character rather than to reflect the culture and symbolism of a holiday event. As such, when in costume, some cosplayers often seek to adopt the effect, mannerism, and body language of the character they portray. The characters chosen to be cosplayed may be sourced from any movie, TV series, book, comic book, video game, music band, anime, or manga. Some cosplayers even choose to cosplay an original character of their own design. So dope. Look at this one. <laughs> 130 bucks. 130 for that one, yeah. Here, this is this is better though. 
<laughs> Cheerleaders from Hell. This is a variant cover of number 21, and it's 800. Isn't that crazy that this is literally that for some reason that one book is just crazy high? It's not just an homage to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, it's actually more of a kind of a continuation from where her story ends. And you know, I mean, the man, Frank Victor, and his monster in the frozen New York at the end of the book, right? Oh, that's why. I have the newsstand edition, which is worth a, a lot. Why is this? Oh, it's got scuffed edges. Yeah, this one's got the edges all messed up. Still, not too bad of a price. Questions about anything, let us know. Then I got my newest invention here that I'm still working on the video. And? This is a piano that when you make a mistake, it shocks you. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, me, as the one playing. And I actually have a little keyboard set up. Can you make a dance dance revolution with that? <laughs> yeah, you probably could. You probably could, but I feel like that'd be really injury prone when you like buckle suddenly and you smack your And I guess you need to get really good at the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. High stakes. High yeah, exactly. High stakes. <laughs> Brand new superhero. Yeah. Burrito Supreme. I saw it on the on the list. Oh, you guys were gonna I was looking through who was all gonna be here. Awesome. Lives on a frozen food planet. This dog's a cocktail wiener. Best friend Grab the ravioli. <laughs> I like the cocktail. Can, can I look through this one? Absolutely, yeah. yeah of course. Yep. Awesome. <clears throat> and then we have him giving homage to some of the other superheroes out there as well. Right. <laughs> I like it. Because everything is better with burritos. I think that's the truth. Everything <laughs> can agree with. <laughs> it's comical. You get a lot of people stopping in over here so far. No? So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a weird corner. It is. It's, <laughs> who are you guys distributing through? You got. Oh, brand new. Yeah. Self-published for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. You're just visiting like uh, conventions and stuff? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All the pros, they asked the way to get the word out. So. Right. Conventions. Right. Are you a fan of Logging from well? Um, I'm going to check this out. I'm so checking this, everything out. Yeah, that's you know? great. Um, so this is... Uh, Ooh. So fine. close. Uh, this is uh, Slavic mythology, so Polish and Ukrainian mythology meets epic fantasy. So right. Like, like Percy Jackson meets the Witcher. So okay. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, sure. As a matter of fact, okay. just came out uh, in December. This is our second volume to this book here. As a matter of fact, we are uh, very proud of that work. <laughs> nice. Thanks. What? Uh, who are you? So I'm the writer. Okay. And I also do the lettering for the book. And then so I'm Rich Perez down here. <laughs> right. So yeah, I wrote. So this is the original, this is the sequel, and then this is the follow-up to that. And nice. then we're gonna have one more volume after that, hopefully next year. Can I tell you about my featured science fiction? Sure. So that's at fault. It's the first in a five-book sci-fi saga that uses a globally diverse cast to walk us through the world of Earth after the melt that you see depicted here. It goes back and forth between timelines and characters while we're fighting tsunamis, fighting each other. We've got action, drama, romance, violence all taking place in front of this crazy backdrop. Sure. How's it going? I'm good. How about you? Good, good. This is my own independent comic book. Oh, nice. It's a supernatural thriller called Spectrus and Savannah. Spectrus is the ghost of Cleopatra's top assassin right. living in the modern world. And uh, Savannah is her demon uh, partner. Two of them are bound together by an ancient curse. I also do audiobooks. In fact, okay. I have a page with free audiobooks that you can listen to. Awesome. That is in this genre. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm a voice artist. Well, like, this is what I do for a living. So I'm all, oh, I'm just in front of a microphone all day long. Graphic novel, 18 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Doing theme park work, Disney stuff. Interesting. 
fun, dude. If these guys want to dress up and go to conventions, because we all yeah, do. He's a ghost that this one is in the jungle. There you go. Ten bucks. Good disc. These your games? Yeah. You want a bag? No. Kid. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching Idle Tales. I'll see you next time.